Hey everyone, I'm Dave. I'm Anime. Anime, it seems like every single day we get a new announcement of a comic book that's going to be turned into a TV series. Yeah. It's crazy. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just came out last week. We loved it. But you know what? There's a ton on the horizon. That's what this show is all about. We're going to talk about what we know about these upcoming comic book TV shows. Yeah. Now, there is a long history of comic books being turned into live action shows. And you know what? There have been a whole lot of successful ones. Yes. But it's kind of weird that all of a sudden, all at once, there are a ton that are supposed to be coming out within the next year or two. Totally. And not only is it weird, but I love how DC and Marvel are sort of competing in this weird way right now. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, let's talk about Gotham first. Okay. Now, this is the thing that I find really funny. That same night Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premiered, DC came out with the news about Gotham literally hours before it premiered. Yeah. How funny is that? It's kind of weird. It is. Now, basically, Gotham is going to be a show on Fox. So Gotham is about a young Commissioner Gordon before he was Commissioner, when he was back just a detective, before there was any Batman. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting how far they're going to take this from when Batman first shows up. Mm -hmm. Basically, the idea is, you know, we're going to start seeing some of Batman's rogues gallery in their infancy before Batman shows up and kicks all their butts. Mm -hmm. Now, this show is from Bruno Heller. He's the guy who created The Mentalist. Uh, he did uh, Rome. That's all we really know about it so far. In the comic books, there have been a few stories here or there about, like, early Jim Gordon. You know, like, there was right. one when he was, like, a criminology student, and he stopped, like, a corrupt election, and uh, ended up, you know, like, uh, getting two, like, uh, uh, corrupt cops in prison, you right. know, over the whole thing. So there have been a few things like this, but overall, most of the stories are just sort of, like, a month or two years or whatever before Batman. Now, do you know how long before Batman this is supposed to take place? No, but considering he's a detective, uh, and usually I think Jim Gordon is at least Lieutenant Gordon by the time Batman shows up. Right. Um, probably quite a few years. I would assume at least five to seven years, considering how long they want to take the franchise. Which means that this, this could be really interesting, because if it is just five to seven years, then he could be dealing with largely the corruption of the city, which is something, you know, we saw a lot of the gangsters and stuff in the comics and the movies. Falcone. Um, and, you know, and like you said, the infancy of some of the supervillains. Yes. But if you take it back a lot further than that to maybe, you know, when he was kind of just starting to be a detective, it could be back as far as when uh, Bruce Wayne's parents were still alive. Exactly. Which in itself could lead to something interesting because there are plenty of stories where Bruce Wayne's dad might have been a little bit of a vigilante himself. Yeah, I mean, they probably wouldn't do that. I don't even know if those stories are considered canon. Some are. But you know what? It's... Really, though? Some are, yeah. So, I, that's the problem with canon, isn't it? Is that, like, anything that came out in a Batman issue that is in a graphic novel is canon. Well, the thing is that, you know, this is why they end up having to reboot universes. Yeah, exactly. Totally, totally. Uh, let's move on next. There are Actually, most of these announcements are DC. Right. Um, but there is at least one Marvel announcement, uh, and that is the uh, sort of rumblings of a supposed... Agent Carter television series. Now, this is not something that has been confirmed. No. This is something Marvel's looking at. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the Agent Carter one-shot just came out with the Iron Man 3 Blu-ray. I think we all loved Haley Atwell as that character. Uh, and it could be really interesting, though it would have to be a period piece, right? It would, you know. Um, but then again, if, if that's the way that they feel that they can make a strong female as their main character, then I guess... Sure, since they apparently can't figure out another character to do. <laughs> totally. Also, because Disney owns ABC, and that's where we find S.H.I.E.L.D., ABC is tends to be a little more generated towards uh, female content anyway, yep. and shows for women, so it would probably be a really good spot for that. And you know what? This might be one of the few times where uh, jumping into a period piece during the 50s or 60s might actually work for a network show. One of the things that I love about uh, just Marvel in general right now is that they're doing such a great job at connecting their, their TV and movies. Mm -hmm. um, they're really showing you that the world of live action for Marvel is all interconnected. It's the same way that they always have done with their comics. They are all in the same world. And there's a big period now where really they're not going to reflect too much on it because mm -hmm. the fact is see Rogers now in the real, in the normal time, the yep. real world. Uh, but you know what? Someone had to fight Hydra from like the 50s to now, right? Yeah. Why couldn't that somebody be Peggy Carter anime? Mm -hmm. Next up is The Flash. Ooh. Ooh. So The Flash is going to be a spin-off from Arrow. Uh, it's it's not 100% confirmed yet. Yes. 
But it, they they seem to be pretty much pushing for it to happen. Yeah. Now he's going to show up in three episodes of Arrow in the second season. The last episode serving as a pilot. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to be Barry Allen, of yeah. course, the quintessential Flash that everyone loves. So they have cast Barry Allen already. He's a young guy. His name's Grant Gustin. I guess he was on Glee. I'm not really familiar with him. But either way, I thought it was really interesting that they're going like super young. I mean, the guy's in his early 20s. Right. Uh, certainly really not the age of someone who would even be a forensics guy unless he was like, you know, Super Doogie genius. Hauser. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I He's believe... He's the Doogie Hauser of forensics. Exactly. But I do believe he is like an assistant forensics guy. It's an so... internship. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good point. So uh, we're going to see him in there. And, you know, the thing is, anime, there has already been a Flash series. I remember when I was a kid in mm -hmm. 1990... It failed uh, for a few reasons, but I loved the show as a kid. It was really cool. So it's really cool they're introducing The Flash again on TV. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's going to be a spinoff from Arrow is really cool because they can keep like spinning these DC characters off but have them all in the same universe. Yeah, and the CW seems to be a really good place for them. Next up, also DC, John Constantine. The Vertigo character that Alan Moore created. The character that started off in those Swamp Thing comics. Exactly. Uh, of course, went on to the Hellblazer series. Now, actually, he's actually part of the 52 now. John Constantine could be really cool for television. Really, really bizarre. Yeah, I gotta admit, I think it seems almost like a slam dunk when you really think about it. Okay, so first off, David Goyer mm -hmm. is gonna be uh, the guy who's gonna be one of the executive producers, of course, Mr. Wrote Batman, Wrote Man of Steel. On top of that, also executive producer from The Mentalist is also gonna be on it, and it's kind of interesting too because John Constantine is slightly like a lot of the anti-heroes on TV nowadays. Yeah. He's a guy who uh, basically Basically, he's a con man. Yep. Uh, he's a guy who really kind of uh, gets his way out of things using his mind instead of just muscle or guns. Yeah. He's a sorcerer. We don't mind the Constantine movie Keanu Reeves did a long time ago. Yeah, but I it was see, okay. I can see why a lot of people didn't like it because yeah. Keanu Reeves really isn't the guy for that character. Yeah, I also think that uh, they, people tend to like for characters like that them to stick a little more to storylines from the comics. Exactly. Now, John Constantine, he's English. He's blonde. He's mm -hmm. a chain smoker. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I think that NBC, which is where the show is going to be, is a really good, great place. NBC wow, has DC's been doing... Wow, DC's properties are going everywhere. They're going everywhere, exactly. But the thing is, is that John Constantine could be really, really cool mm -hmm. because NBC likes to do supernatural stuff lately, you know, like Grimm. Right. But what's really interesting, I think, is if you take Constantine in a way, it's sort of like one half, like the character from The Mentalist, and one half the show Supernatural. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff in the show Supernatural that you could definitely say, oh, maybe they got that from from the Hellblazer series. Yeah. Uh, it's very much in that world. The and angels, the demons. Exactly. And I, I think, honestly, it could be a really good show. It could definitely be really interesting. Now, you know, some of the other uh, comics like that that they've talked about doing shows for in the past, uh, like Dead Man. Yeah. Um, they are all ones that are a little more difficult to do. But I think that if they really kind of try to stick more to the comic book lore, they'll be more successful with. Because there's a reason that these characters have been popular for as long as they have. I think Constantine is such a unique character that you need to keep him with what he is. He, he needs to still be British. He doesn't necessarily need to be a chain smoker, you know. I don't mind if he's trying to quit or Maybe something. Maybe he's got a bunch of patches up his arm. Yeah, but... You know, but the fact is, I think that, that it could be a really interesting TV show. And I think if they, they're willing to go dark with it the way that they do on, like, Grimm, I think that, that they could have a successful show. All right, anime. Next up is another Alan Moore property. Okay. See, they screwed up all of his stories in movies, and now they're going to do it in TV. And that is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, a movie you all probably remember with tears and a lot of shuddering and going like this. I guess a lot of you don't remember that. it because I don't know how many I of you that. actually saw it. I can't it. believe I watched that. Now, I feel like they're going to make this show purely to compete with that Penny Dreadful show that's going to be on Showtime. Yeah, if you've read anything about Penny Dreadful and you know anything about The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, you're probably like, wait a second, that sounds familiar. Yeah, it's almost the exact same story, which, yeah. you know, shame on you guys. But either way, you know what? The comic book is great. Ellen Moore's fantastic. And I almost feel like they're trying to do this because of shows, like the fairy tale shows somehow. I think they're right. trying to kind of 
twist that idea to like a fairy tale way because you know like all the characters are uh characters from novels mm-hmm. alan quartermain and nina harker mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see if they keep it in the old time period it'll be interesting to see if they're really able to make it come together uh and it'll be also interesting to see if they piss off alan Moore the way <laughs> this happened with every single one of his movies well i'm sure they will anime yeah fox is the one ordering the pilot so we'll have to see what happens happens with Leaders for an Era Gentleman. Mm-hmm. What's next, anime? Well, you're probably wondering why we haven't talked about Amazon yet, uh, which is the Wonder Woman series that, that they've sort of been in talks about doing for a while. Uh, I don't really think we have much to say because for now it's been shelved potentially permanently. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, they keep on going through script revisions, whatever. They don't like what they have to say. They don't like what they're doing. Who they knows what direction They don't feel like it's they're... right. Yeah. yeah. I, so... Maybe they're waiting to see how uh, Agent Carter does, if exactly. that ever comes out. <laughs> then they'll be like, yeah, yeah, we could totally do this. Totally. All right, so next up we have this show called Unthinkable. Now, this is based on a mini series from Boom Comics. Now, honestly, I'm not that familiar with it. It actually sounds a lot like that show Castle. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some similarities at least. Um, and like you said, it's a mini series. This isn't some sort of long running comic book, not some sort of uh, character that we all know and love. This is a mini series comic run. Yeah, it's from 2009. Essentially, it's about a novelist who was part of a think tank after 9 11 to come up with scenarios that uh, basically terrorists could use to attack America. And then obviously the think tank closed down. And then after that, the scenarios that the author came up with started happening. And he and an FBI agent basically have to get in front of it and stop these attacks from happening. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it really kind of sounds like a very, very average TV fair, doesn't it? Yeah. It sort of sounds like 24 meets Castle. Yeah, it really does. It's one of those that I don't really know how long they can keep it going and and keep it interesting. You know, sure, it could end up being another castle, but... Do we need another castle? No, and I don't know what station it's going to be on, but it sounds like a CBS show to me, anime. <laughs> kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, last but not least is... The Walking Dead spinoff. Yeah! So, uh, the Walking Dead spinoff isn't specifically based on anything in the comics. It's just based on the world of The Walking Dead. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't have to keep uh, true to any characters. Mm-hmm. It, it can be put into any location they feel like. It could take place in another country if they really wanted it to it won't but it could it could Um, yeah at the end of the day they're very restricted in a way because these characters are from a comic book right that now they can pretty much do whatever they want for for good or bad okay guys either way that's it for this show what of these shows are you most excited for and even more importantly If you could have one comic book you love turned into a television series, what would it be? Let us know in the comments down below. Either way, if you want to listen to our radio show run every week on Indie 100 and The Point. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can send us an email to geekworldradio at yahoo.com and be sure to check out our website, geekworldradio.com. Hey, anime. Yeah? You want to go blackmail God by the fireside like John Constantine? Sounds like a good idea to me. Booyah! Bye!